Body Shop. Welcome back to Studio 5. You know, it's easy to lose your calm with the demands of everyday life. Busy moms know some days it feels impossible to find even those small daily pockets of peace. Life coach Tiffany Peterson says it is possible to find daily zen in the middle of the madness. This word has kind of seen an uptick in the last couple of years. What exactly is zen? Well, Zen by formal definition in Japanese simply means meditation. Okay. But I think when we're talking about we want more Zen in our lives, we're all searching for I want a little more peace, a lot more feeling grounded, feeling centered versus feeling so scattered and, you know, busy that I think we're feeling. And the reality is I think when we contemplate an, the idea of peace, we think of these long extended hours of right. time at the spa or time on the beach. That's just not practical for the everyday mom on the go. Shoot, you just took me there. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, where are we going? I'm sorry. No, I think it's true. It's how do we create more of it in pockets, like you're saying. And I think ideally is the way we start our day shapes our day. And hopefully the first, what I call the sacred 10, the first 10 minutes of your day gets to be some form of grounding, connecting. That might be prayer, meditation, journaling, some yoga, reading something inspiring. Mm -hmm. Most often we're starting our days on our little mini computers called a cell phone. And yes. we're in text, we're in email, we're in social media, or or we're out the door for a job and we're just starting the day kind of already off into this you know frenetic space and so in personal growth it's been taught for a long time this concept of having a power hour now for most of us that would sound more stressful so the first 10 minutes of your day and then maybe having a 10 minute pocket in the middle of your day uh -huh. to reground yourself in fact you call this an adult recess of yeah sorts. So here's the thing, Brooke, like as little kids, we got recess in the middle of our day, right? And we got it, I think, twice a day and then a lunch break uh -huh. where we got time to get the wiggles out. Well, as adults, we're just simply kids with longer legs. <laughs> now, some of us with longer legs than others. But the point is, is in the middle of all this moving and hustle and bustle, taking a little time, whether again, you meditate, you pray, you um, and it doesn't even have to be something spiritual oriented. It's maybe you just turn your technology off for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you read a book for 10 minutes. You just do something to disconnect and reconnect to that inner peace that we're looking for. I love the reminder that how you start your day will affect the rest of your day, yes. almost easing into that mm -hmm. crazy routine that we know will inevitably hit. Yes. You also want us to throw away the traditional to-do list that women oh. clutch so tightly. Hands down. I mean, how many of you have this to-dos list that's like 28 things on it every Guilty. single day? Guilty. Right? Yes. And how does that make you feel? crazy all the time yeah and then there's the flip side if you don't have the massive to-do list is you're not having any structure and you'll just let the wind blow you wherever the day takes you most of you though and myself right most of us on the spit in this space are in that massive to-do list right which is going to create a ton of stress and so it's creating for yourself I like to say pick two priorities that's it you get two things on the list two per day that's it two per day and ideally, most of my clients do it what we call night before planning. So the night before, they pick one personal and one business. Now, if you don't have a business, you can obviously have two personal. But it's picking what are the top two priorities for this day. It's not to say that you won't go on to do more. Right. But that by choosing, you're picking a focus and saying, you know what? This day, this is the top priority for this thing for myself or for my family or for my business. Rather than having this mile-long to-do list that you just always feel like you're never enough. You're never getting it done and you just feel stressed out all the time. It feels so much better just to hear you say that. Pick yeah, two, focus two. on those. You want us to get moving. That's simple and to the point. Yeah. What kind of benefit will we see from that? I've been reading this great book by Tom Rath. He wrote the book Strength Finders, mm -hmm. right? New York Times bestseller called Eat, Move, Sleep. And it's pretty simplistic, but it's just talking about how we become so sedentary where we're at desks all the time, we drive, we're just, you know, we just sit a lot. And so even getting moving, Fitbits become kind of this popular thing where people are tracking their steps and right. mo more movement. And so it doesn't have to be extensive, whether it's around your office, around your home, around your neighborhood, is just allow yourself a few minutes to get up and get moving. When I think of those pockets of peace, those quiet moments, what gets me excited is the idea that inspiration might follow, right? From right. that calm, meditative state. Yeah. So how can we pull more inspiration into our lives? Yeah, I love this. It's shaping your environment to support you, right? Is there's three things that create your success currently and your future success. Your mindset, your skill set, and your environments. So it's adding to your environment. That might be lighting a candle. I know it sounds so simple, but for me, like lighting a candle puts me pretty present. There's something about 
fire and flame that that's atmosphere. just ooh. But it might be diffusing essential oils or it might be some beautiful music that just again it's you're putting into your environment things that inspire you and support you. I love having fresh flowers in my home all the time, right? There's lots of ways to get those in a pretty, you know, inexpensive way. Right. It's just adding to your environment things that will shift the energy and shift the mood back to again more peace and less out of the harried distractions. And when we talk about those distractions, those Zen distractions, if you will, immediately coming to mind, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram, Pinterest. Yeah. You mentioned shutting those off perhaps at the beginning of the day. Is there room for more of that throughout the day as well? Yeah, I think when you ask yourself, what are you the most addicted to? And it might be Diet Coke or it might be sugar. But I would say for most of us today, the thing that we're constantly checking or we're we're owned by is our technology. Right. Most of us have a little mini smartphone, a little computer we're carrying at all times, our email, our social media apps. So get your technology on a leash, right? Some of people that I've studied and worked with and that I coach and teach is to check your email in certain blocks of a day versus having it up all day. You hear that ding and you immediately get pulled away by those It's funny you say that. So there's this book I've been reading called The Power of Habit and it talks about how just like the experience where you would ring the bell and the dog would salivate, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pavlov's dog is the same concept. When you hear your text buzz, can you really stay away from it? Or you hear your email ding you? Turn those notifications off or even turn it all the way to silent. I do that many days. That way I can go check my technology when it works for me versus it running my life. It puts you in control. Yes. And I just think too many, if I had to say this is the number one tip out of everything we've talked about, it's this one. Get your technology in some boundaries. Get it on a leash. Otherwise, it runs you. Turn off your notifications. Turn off the buzz, the noises that are just constantly pulling you into their world, which is brilliant marketing sure, for those apps. Sure. However, for you to say, oh, this is the time when it's best for me to check my technology, right, to a degree. And I realize for some people they have to be plugged in pretty, mo you know, a lot of the time, uh -huh. but there are ways to put boundaries to it. I'm always motivated to make positive changes. Tiffany, great advice. Thank you so much. Where can Thanks. people get more about you and your speaking schedule? You can find me at thelighthouseprinciples.com or on Facebook at Tiffany Peterson. So great to see yeah. you. Thanks. Thanks, love. All right, coming up next, our favorite fruit-infused candle that will have you smelling spring. We're adding to the Studio 5 Loveless next.